All right, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, tell, tell everyone where, you, where, where we are here. Hey everybody, I'm Pete Smith, I, uh, I'm an oyster farmer, I just got off the Damer Scotter River here, been down there farm raising a few, getting them ready for the weekend, and uh, we're up here this weekend up to Damer Scotter's Alewives and Ales. Beautiful, and you live around here, is that right? Or? Yep, I'm a local resident, I've been working down on the uh, farm there in the river for about eight years. And what, what kind of oysters do you raise down here? We have the American oysters, the Cross Austria Virginia. Oh, <laughs> all right. In 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 kind of layman's terms, what are they? Pemiquid? Is that what they know yeah, as? We have raised the uh, farm raised pemiquid oysters. All right, and we're right. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right over Peter's shoulder, uh, there's the Jammer Scotta River where the where the, we got a little sun line our way right now. But that's where the oysters are raised. And uh, so anyway, so why don't you tell us? Tell us uh, let's take a walk because uh, earwives and eels in the interest of disclosure, it's actually my relatives on the joint, but it's cool because. Uh, it's the only, as far as we know, bed, breakfast, and brewery in New England. Yep. And uh, eel wives are the fish that, like, uh, striped bass feed on, right? Is that correct? Yeah, it's one of them. They'll and do their migration. So they, they kind of name their brewery, their uh, inn, their bed and breakfast after uh, after kind of the local fish. And they make local beer here and everything. And so the, the name Damariscata actually means to walk across the facts of fish. Is that what it means, really? Native. And like uh, Abenaki or something like yep. that, or really? That's their native uh, terminology. How, how old is, uh, here's the B&B &B right here behind Peter, by the way. How old is the town, anyway? Oh, uh, well, Pemiquid um, Lighthouse was settled back in, I believe it was in the 1670s or so. Oh, really? It was a while back. You know, and uh, it was one of the first settlements on the east coast here. Oh, wow. The Americas. I know when you go down to Pemiquid Light, there's uh, a sign for like when a ship, an English ship was wrecked. Yep. That's and the one. yeah, and they and they found somehow found their way down to Ipswich or something. Yeah. Back then, I mean, they must have had to you know either trek through the. Time. Yeah, they had, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, all right. Well, listen, we're gonna go into what they call the library over here, which is a little uh, uh, where the whole town gathers to have a few beers yeah, and eat and eat smoked fish. So right. uh, smoked alewives. So that's what we're gonna go check out. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. All right, we're here at the little brewery at Alewives and Eels. They call it uh, the library where the as you can see from the sign, fighting illiteracy one beer at a time, and it's basically, uh, they just make, you know, beer for themselves, but it's a pretty cool little place, and they also make smoked fish in the, in the beer hall here, and we're going to go check them out, that's, uh, uh, smoked herring or smoked medical or something, but we got the, the, uh, maintenance man, Ray the maintenance man here to tell us a little bit about what's going on here, what, what are these, Ray? These are alewives, and these are native to Damariscotta, and they come up from the ocean, they travel up the Damariscotta River, they go into the uh, uh, cove, and then they actually go up a fish ladder to the Damascotta Lake where they spawn. And I'm not sure if they die or they come back, but we'll figure that out. All right. Well, obviously this and one, these, this one died. Yeah. And how do you? No, these died because I I made it die. <laughs> so but what do you do here? What are, what are these? They, what we do is you brine them first. Yeah. You put them in a salt brine. Yeah. And let them. Uh, then you dry them. For a twenty, you twenty-four hours in the yep. brine. Take them out, let them dry for about seven or eight hours, and you smoke them with either a, an apple wood, a cherry, or whatever. Yeah. And then you serve them with uh, maybe a good alcoholic beverage, <laughs> maybe a beer. Okay. Uh, and and you enjoy them. All right, but and this I, is a traditional native thing, though. This is, is. A, this oh, is yeah. something they did. Are, yeah, they've been coming up and down this river for years. All right. Well, why don't you show us real quick, and we'll be all set. You kind of open it up, and we'll see where all yeah, the meat is. Yeah, but we have as. Uh, there they are. Nice oh, reddish wow, yeah, color yeah. meat. Isn't that great? I mean, it's they're, little, they're a little bony, but you have to be careful. Why don't you pick off a little meat there so we can... Look. That's pretty neat, and they go really good, uh... I'm going to show you this. go really good with beer, right? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. All right, awesome. They're delicious. All right, great, Ray. Well, thanks a lot, man. Okay, I appreciate well, it. Well, it's nice to see you. Next time you come to Maine, make sure you stop in. <laughs> Talk to you soon, thanks. Okay. All right, we do a little bit of everything at Alewives and Ales. Here's the beer engine, the English-style beer engine, to serve the beer. You can see some pour out there. Uh, over here is the walk-in cooler, where we keep all the big stuff. Like, there's a lamb right there. See, that's a lamb all dressed out. Uh, that's going to be uh, cooked in the ground, uh, barbecued in the ground tomorrow for a uh, big party we're having. You can see the kegs of beer. Well, that's holding up the, the uh, lamb, but the kegs of beer there. There's grain in there, all different kinds of stuff. Uh, Oh, that's Mackenzie. Say hi, Mackenzie. No. That's Pete. You met him before, the oyster farmer. This is Billy, who uh, runs the big pumpkin festival up here. So Billy actually grows record. What's the biggest pumpkin you've ever grown? 1,266. 1,200. That's a big pumpkin, man. And uh, over here is the grain uh, for all the beer they make here. And uh, I can't really show you the brew house, but here's 
we picked a bunch of hops today. Here's all the hops drying right here. Uh, they grow tons of hops. This is today's uh, batch of hops. It's drying on kind of a grate to let the air flow around it. Uh, see right there, kind of where where the air comes through. And that's kind of it, man. They uh, grow a little bit of everything here. They brew their own beer, catch their own fish, catch their own oysters, grow everything. And it's kind of really neat. So uh, that's what it. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Uh, we're here at the big McConnell Alewives and Ales lamb cookout, and uh, that's the lamb, and this is Ray, the man cooking the lamb. What was the lamb's name, anyway? Uh, Daisy. Daisy? Daisy you, May. Daisy May. Did you feel bad taking down Daisy? Well, no. Daisy had a little problem. She had a handicap. She oh, she did? She had one leg caught in a fence, and uh, so therefore she was not able to, uh, you know, move around in the pasture. So she was actually confined to a decent sized pen and they didn't want to winter her over. Okay, so what are you doing here? What's with all the garlic? Oh, that's going into, we're going to make little slits into the uh, caucus and we're going to just implant these little garlic uh, cloves to give some freshness and uh, flavor and then we're going to put some salt and pepper inside it and I've already uh, sort of glazed it with some uh, grape seed oil. Okay, beautiful. So, Alright, well next step we'll be putting this thing on the fire pit. That's it. Alright, talk to you soon. Nice. Okay, folks, well, it's uh, Saturday, I think August 21st. It's the day of the big lamb roast. That's uh, Ray over there. It's his big 70th birthday. That's a celebration. And my job to get the fire going. This is the pit Ray built that we're going to cook the lamb in. Just got the uh, base of the fire going, get some extra coals going there. And it's a cinder block pit, kind of in the side of a hill. And the lamb, probably be out in about an hour, put it in, take four or five hours to cook. And got a bunch of people coming over, and that's, that's kind of it. Here's our little setup. Charcoal there, water there. We don't want to burn down all of Damascus Scott Main. And talk to you guys soon. Go. Hi folks, I'm Kerry. We're here at uh, Alewives and Eels Bed and Breakfast. It's actually my, my in-laws own it. It's in Denver, Scotter, and, uh, in Denver, Scotter, Maine, and Midcoast, Maine. It's a cool place. But it's kind of like the uh, the off-season headquarters of the Cold Art Hall. We do a lot of cool stuff up here. And right now, this is the back of the pigskin Ford pickup. We're pickling all the all the hot peppers and pickles and tomatoes and everything that we grew during the year actually down in Boston. We brought these up here. But the, the pickled, the uh, pickled, I'm making something called hot pickled maters, which I don't know if you ever know the book, uh, Ram and Jim, a Yellow Hammer. It's a book about Alabama football. But they talked about this recipe called hot pickled maters. So I found, I hunted down the guy who wrote the book. He put me in touch with the guy who actually makes this thing. So we're making actually kind of an Alabama style green, green tomatoes with, with jalapeno peppers in them. And they're really tasty and hot and neat. Uh, we got the vinegar going here, the water for the mason jars here. There's all the mason jars. We got some other cool stuff going on over here. Here's a pigskin Ford pickup, by the way. Brand new, nice and shiny. And what we got going on, this little Mackenzie, by the way. Wave, 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 wave. And in here, 
here, I don't know if you can get the camera in here to, to see this whole thing, but uh, we got a limb going. That's going to be William Jenner. Get right in there. Can you see, like in there? How long is that limb going to take, Ray? About four hours. About four hours. So I think we're two hours into it, but we got a limb kind of in a pit, and it's kind of in, a, in the side of a hill here. Cut that uh, Doc McConnell, the maintenance man here at Alewives and Ales, he kind of came out and built it all. His Doc McConnell there. So, what do you turn 50 this year? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's his big 50th birthday. Uh, I saw it's 50 and a half. We sell it on the half. Oh, is that it? Is that how we do it in Maine? Because yes. they have trouble counting in Maine. So, but uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's kind of the. Oh wait, wait, we got one more thing. We went to a farmer's market yesterday. This isn't too hot, and we got a. Uh, Chorizo made with chicken, so it's pretty cool. This is just like freshly killed chicken that they turned into sausage the other day. So we're trying that, and uh, we got some other goodies we'll show you in a, in a little while. So talk to everybody soon. Go. Well, one thing I forgot at Alewives and Eels, it's, all, it's the only bed, breakfast, and brewery as far as we know in New England. And uh, here are the brewers over here. I don't know if you can see Billy and Ray, the maintenance man. But uh, Ray's from, from Rhode Island. Billy's a local hillbilly redneck. Billy speaks English. He speaks with primitive clucks and whistles, actually. But he makes good beer, and this is their summer beer. And, uh, Billy, why don't you tell everyone what's, what's in the beer? This is your summer beer. He's a, and you think English this time. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> okay. Y'all. <Dull. laughs> what, so what's in the beer? It's, uh, was it coriander, this lemon zest? This is a, uh, lemon zest, lime zest, clementine zest. And then we put a half ounce of coriander in it just to, uh, knock down the bitter a little bit. It's a blonde yeah. ale. Yeah. Nice light summer beer. And what did you win the award for? You won a homebrewing award at the New England Well, we, didn't you? we moved on. We entered the national homebrew competition uh, first round in category 21, which is spice beer. Yeah. Was, was that a, this beer? Is this the beer you nope, entered? No. Nope. Oh, okay. This was a vanilla bourbon porter. Okay. And uh, we took second place and moved on to the second round. We didn't yep. do anything in the second round, but as far as we know, we're the first group from Maine to go on to the second round in over two years. So. And you know what they told him when he tried to go to the Nationals? You can't get there from here. Isn't that what they told you? Well, you that's what they that told us. But... <laughs> <laughs> you can just say it once. <laughs> you can't get there from here. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys. All right, we got the... We had a great destroy, <laughs> didn't it? That's a nice looking lamb, huh? So we got the beer. Got Gary the beer for everybody. It's like a whole assembly line here. Oh, what's going to grace? What's going on, guys? Everybody wave. Yeah, I think we gotta do everything. Take it right off. Oh, we lost the light in here. No, we didn't. Hang on. No, just the light for the. Jonathan, say you can't get there from here. Can't get there from here, buddy. No, no, say hi. Ah, yeah. He won't, he won't. No, can't do it.